check my client, explain the procedure. Now I gotta go wash my hands and I'm gonna get some gloves on. I don't need sterile gloves for this procedure. This is a clean procedure, not a sterile procedure. We're going into the GI system and the GI system is loaded with all kinds of bacteria. So uh, what I need to do now is I need to uh, put down a drape, um, a towel work, a chucks, whatever you got, just put down a drape. If, you know, if they start vomiting, have that basin handy. You're also going to explain to them that at a certain point in the procedure, you're going to ask them to swallow water. Um, so you want to have that cup of water handy. And with, as with most procedures, it's always a good idea to have at least two nurses handy. Uh, because the patient may be trying to grab up, you know, when you're trying to get the tube in. Because that's the reflex most of us have when something goes up our nose. We're just like, you know, get away. Um, so I'll get, uh, someone want someone to come and help me on here? Sure. Okay. So I'll get Rosalie to hop on in here. Come on in. And Rosalie's gonna hop on in. I may have this gentleman up on his side because he did have a little bit of redness on the, on the back, but for this procedure, we're gonna need to set him up. And also we wanna put him uh, to a high phallus position, so at 45 degree or higher. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 45 degree or higher, and that looks pretty good right there. Uh, once I'm beyond a certain point in, uh, so once I get into the nasopharynx, that's when we're going to have to get it down into the esophagus. So at that point, I want you to encourage him to hold his chin to his chest, because that's going to help to close the epiglottis off over the airway, so we get a nice shot of that backside. Also to help, um, I'm going to go ahead and mention it now because you won't really see it when I'm doing the procedure, but because of the way these things are packaged, they have a tendency to coil in a certain direction when you put them in. So I usually put them in with the coil going like this. Once I get it in, I'll give it a half turn so that it's coiling toward the back of the throat so it more than likely goes down the esophagus instead of the uh, trachea because you don't want this to go into the lungs. If it goes into the lungs, he's going to start coughing a whole lot, so that's a key sign that we pull it back out and stop and let him catch his breath, and then we may try again. Okay, so I got my lube. Lube's out there. I got my tube. Now I need to do my measurement. Your stomach sits just below your xiphoid process, which is the lowermost tip of your sternum. Um, so I'm going to measure from the tip of the nose to the earlobe. That gets me to the oropharynx, and then I measure from the earlobe, and I'm just holding it still in one place, to the xiphoid process. Okay, so after I've taken my measurement, I want to put a little piece of tape here to mark where my measurement is. Um, I'm not going to put that tape on too tightly because I want to be able to get it right back off if I need to advance the tube anymore. Um, but yeah, that should be about the length of it right there is how much is going into this client. So, um, take all this excess and just put it in my other hand for a moment and get lots of lube on here. So we want to coat the whole thing probably about four or five inches down the tube. So lots of lube. I'm going to have you hold the drink for our client and, uh, you know, that first measurement from the tip of the nose to the, to the ear which was right about here. That's when I'm in the oropharynx. So I'm gonna go in. I usually go a little bit up to get over the nasal ridge, but once I get over the nasal, nasal ridge, I wanna change my trajectory to almost going straight in. I can give it a little bit of a twist too. Um, this mannequin may not be built for this. Uh, I can give it a little bit of a twist too, but I don't want it to get hung up in the, in the uh, nasal turbinates because then it can cause damage to the to the uh, nasal cavity. All right, so I'm to that point where we're probably about uh, about to the uh, nasopharynx. So I'm gonna give it that half twist I talked about. And okay, now I need to tuck your chin down and drink. And every time I see him swallow, so take a big drink and swallow it. Every time he takes a drink and swallows it, I'm gonna advance the tube. That makes it where it's most likely the tube is following the, the water. The water. Um, so I just keep doing that and swallow and swallow. Once I'm about 10, 15 more centimeters in, I really don't have to worry about if he's swallowing. I, I can just keep advancing until it's done. Once we're past that point, 
if he's not coughing and hacking, highly likely that we're already in the esophagus and we can just advance it to the point of the tape, which in this instance, we're not gonna be able to do on this mannequin. So I'm gonna move the tape up just to make it look like we made it and we made it. Loosely secure the tube to the nose as you await confirmation of placement. Okay, good. So stop. Yes, time to the first. Okay, so after I've taken my measurement, I want to put a little piece of tape here to mark where my measurement is. Um, I'm not going to put that tape on too tightly because I want to be able to get it right back off if I need to advance the tube anymore. Um, but yeah, that should be about the length of it right there is how much is going into this client. So, um, take all this excess and just put it in my other hand for a moment and get lots of lube on here. So we want to coat the whole thing probably about four or five inches down the tube. So lots of lube. I'm going to have you hold the drink for our client. And, uh, you know, that first measurement from the tip of the nose to the, to the ear, which was right about here, that's when I'm in the oropharynx. So I'm going to go in. I usually go a little bit up to get over the nasal ridge, but once I get it over the nasal, nasal ridge, I want to change my trajectory to almost going straight in. I can give it a little bit of a twist too. Um, this mannequin may not be built for this. Uh, I can give it a little bit of a twist too, but I don't want it to get hung up in the, in the uh, nasal turbinates because then it can cause damage to the, to the uh, nasal cavity. All right, so I'm to that point where we're probably about, uh, about to the uh, nasopharynx. So I'm gonna give it that half twist I talked about. And okay, now I need to tuck your chin down and drink. And every time I see him swallow, so take a big drink and swallow it. Every time he takes a drink and swallows it, I'm gonna advance the tube. That makes it where it's most likely the tube is following the, the water. The water. Um, so I just keep doing that and swallow and swallow. Once I'm about 10, 15 more centimeters in, I really don't have to worry about if he's swallowing, I, just, I can just keep advancing until it's done. Once we're past that point, if he's not coughing and hacking, highly likely that we're already in the esophagus and we can just advance to the point of the tape, which in this instance, we're not gonna be able to do on this mannequin. So I'm gonna move the tape up just to make it look like we made it and we made it. Whew. Now we do have x-ray coming to do a KUB, which is a kidney, ureter, bladder on this client. Uh, that is the x-ray name for when you wanna look at the abdominal cavity. So you get, get a KUB. That KUB is gonna confirm placement for us. There's two other ways to confirm placement. The first way, and why I have this 30 milliliters of air is I'm gonna take my stethoscope and you might have to end up getting used to putting your stethoscope on with one hand, don't poke yourself in the eye, but if you can do that and connect the air, I'm gonna go uh, down below the xiphoid process and just slightly to the left of the xiphoid process, that's gonna be the fundus of the stomach and then I'm gonna go, you hear that gurgling, you're in the right place, uh, most likely. Now, sometimes if, you, if that tip of the tube is right above the stomach entry at the cardiac sphincter, you'll blow air in and hear that gurgling, but you won't be able to suction anything out because you're not in the actual. So that's one way to do it. Another way to confirm placement, so that's called an air bolus to auscultation. Remember that. Another way is to aspirate some gastric contents. Oh, look at that nice green bile we got there. And I'm gonna hold this up so it doesn't spill all over the place. That's another thing too, you know, don't leave that laying there because it'll just start flooding out. Um, if you got it, if you don't have a clamp, this makes a nice little capping mechanism right there like that. Okay, so I got some bile in this. Uh, if I have the ability to do so, I'm gonna get the litmus test and check the pH of that. And if it's around four, you know, a little less than four, that, yeah, that's acid, stomach secretions. All right, and the last way that we confirm placement is with an x-ray. Once we have confirmation of, pl of placement, we're gonna set the client up for suction. Uh, we're gonna connect it to suction. So uh, you can use your connector piece that, that came with the Salem stump tubing. I like to use a stopcock and the reason for that is because it lets us do a number of things without having to connect and, uh, or disconnect and reconnect the client. So um, I can take and I'm gonna put the short end into the tube itself and um, put the long end in here. So this has a three-way valve. So if I have this port off, then it's 
you know, going to the wall section. I can turn the wall section off and I can draw things up from here or I can administer medications from here if I, you know, get the opportunity to do that later on. So lots of different things that we can do with uh, stop talk. So that's why I like to use them. Um, but uh, the final thing is once we confirm placement for most of your clients that have a nasogastric tube in place for, um, for um, decompression of the, of the stomach, you're gonna set your uh, vacuum to intermittent settings because we don't want this, we don't want this tube to get stuck up against the wall and cause an ulceration. So intermittent sections will suction a little bit, stop, suction a little bit, stop, and your uh, your pressure is usually somewhere between 70 and 80 millimeters of mercury. So it's the high end of low suction. So one more quick thing before we end this video, uh, to discontinue a nasogastric tube, you want to cover the client's chest with a towel or absorbent uh, drape and you're going to loosen up the nasogastric tube from any kind of tube holder or uh, tape that was on the, uh, the nose. And then you're going to have the client take a deep breath uh, as you pull out the tube. You should probably keep the suction on to continuous as you're pulling out the tube too. This will decrease the risk of any fluid falling into the client's lungs. After you pull the tube out, have the client take a deep breath and cough and provide any suction as needed. That's it for nasogastric intubation. Uh, thank you for watching this video and I hope it helps.